It's saying I don't have permission to go live on Facebook. Oh, wait, no, it, it fixed itself. Never mind. Okay. We're good. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Welcome. Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. Hello. We're just going to wait a little bit, see if anyone else joins, and then we will be getting started. Is that everyone from the waiting room? We're good. Everyone's added. Okay. I'm just trying so to. So, since we're all here, just waiting, uh, what counties are you from? Wayne County. Wayne. Nice. That's a good county. <laughs> <laughs> And if you don't want to unmute, you can type in the chat. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Nice. Thank you so much. <laughs> also, Sarah, I too was from Oakland County. Now I'm in Ingham. Yes, I was as well, but now I'm in Sanilac. <laughs> I'm in Ingham. All right, we are going to go ahead and get started. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today um, for our Tech Tuesday, which is assistive technology for youth. Um, and we are going to have... Three presenters today, myself, Asian A. Thomas. I am the Youth Assistive Technology Specialist for our program. And we have Abby Squires. <laughs> I am the AT Specialist for Gaming and Crafting. And we have Jaleesa Irwin. And I am the AT Specialist for Outdoor Recreation. And that is me, sorry. Our mission at MDRC is to cultivate disability pride and strengthen the disability movement by recognizing disability as a natural and beautiful part of human diversity while collaborating to dismantle all forms of oppression. And so Michigan Assistive Technology Program, MATP, uh, we are a free program for people with disabilities by people with disabilities. Um, we provide in-person and virtual demonstrations of our AT. We present trainings to organizations, businesses, and other professionals on accessibility and being inclusive. We also have a lending library. Uh, we offer short and long-term loans and um, of our AT to help identify what works and what doesn't work for you because a lot of times assistive technology can be super expensive, so it's better to know if it works for you or not before you go out and buy it. Um, and our services are available to all individuals of all ages. Uh, we have AT from, for infants all the way up to older adults. So what is AT? AT is any tool, software, or app that can help people with disabilities, including older adults, do what they wanna do. Technology can make things easier for everyone, for people with disabilities, AT opens up possibilities. And why use AT? When used properly, assistive technology provides more opportunities to engage in activities and make activities more inclusive. It can help develop the sense of independence or interdependence and help uh, individuals confidently complete tasks that previously required assistance, feeding or dressing are examples. There are no specific age or skills required to use assistive technology, meaning that almost all individuals with disabilities can benefit. Next slide. So here's some questions and housekeeping. So questions are welcome throughout the webinar today. So please type them in the chat or unmute and ask. And then getting to know you, uh, we asked this question previously, but for those who are just joining, what county are you from? And then if you are comfortable, 
uh, can you uh, write in the chat or unmute to describe what type of person you identify as? So examples are a person with a disability, a family member or guardian, um, representative of education, community living, health and rehab, technology, or other identity. Yep, and if you would rather uh, direct message uh, one of us, you can do that if you don't feel comfortable typing in the chat to everyone. Oh, thank you. We parent have mentor. Yeah, as I said, Chris Moore, parent mentor from Michigan Alliance for Families. Chris, thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you. We also have Christina from Shiawassee, person with a disability and works at uh, the NCAP. Woohoo! Yeah, woo Thank you for joining us. Yes. So, what we will cover today um, assistive technology devices for youth to use in their daily lives that can assist with learning, development, cognition and mental health, and to use while participating in indoor and outdoor hobbies, recreation and play. And then also, this is just a brief overview of various assistive technology for youth. Um, if you'd like to know more about any of these topics and the AT that's out there, uh, please feel free to contact us um, and we can go more in depth. We have quite a bit of uh, items on this, presentation and it can be overwhelming so yes. again please feel free to reach out to us and our emails will be in the chat at the end of the slides and on the resource guide <laughs> and on <Yes>. our website <laughs> thank you so we are going to get started with talking about some assistive technology that youth can use in their daily lives and those will include um, different AT devices that can assist with dressing. So there's adaptive clothing and also sensory clothing. So being mindful of scenes and clothing, tags on clothing. Um, and then there's a lot of different adaptive clothing out there um, that are magnets and using zippers over buttons and snaps. Um, what we have pictured on the screen is a uh, device called Zubits, which is a magnetic um, device that helps with tying shoelaces. So instead of having to tie your shoes, you can add the Zubits um, to the laces and then now it's just a more of a magnetic snap. And then also there are so many different devices for cooking. That's a whole training in itself. But just some things that we have had um, a, quite a few individuals that request these items or want to use these items. So like our double-sided um, spatula is very popular um, item with youth for, for youth that want to um, be able to flip pancakes by themselves. And the image on the screen is someone using the double spatula for um, a grilled cheese. So it's just two sides to the spatula. It's like a tong um, where you would grab the item and be able to flip it and navigate it um, rather than using the one handed spatula. Um, and then also the, um, the liquid, um, I always forget this name, <laughs> um, but it's it pretty liquid, liquid level indicator. Level indicator. There we, we have go. two different <laughs> kinds. There's some that have just two prongs and some with three. So like when it starts, uh, your cup starts filling up when it hits the two prongs that are lower down, it'll start beeping. And then when it hits the third one in the middle, that's higher up, it's like, beep, 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 beep. like stop it. It's going to overfill. Yes, so that is for, is helpful for people that have low vision or are blind, and then also the Colorino color identifier, um, which is the rainbow. Um, I'm sorry, image on the screen that is almost like a remote, and it has a um, has two buttons on it, um, the red button and then a yellow button, and um, you will put the device up against your shirt or. Um, or any color that you're trying to see, like if something, just to be able to identify what color something is. And it, a voice will um, come out of the speaker that says red or blue or yellow. Um, and then it also identifies that there's light in the room. Um, so that's helpful too for people that are low vision or are blind. And then we have other devices that um, can assist with opening bottles, opening cans, opening pop cans, um, jars. There's so many different um, devices 
devices out there that can assist with uh, other your day-to-day -day tasks. So um, the device uh, with the pop can is called a Cappy. Um, some of them don't really have names if you just kind of Google pop can opener. Um, there's a couple of different devices out there and um, the Cappy people like that because you can um, use it to open the pop can and then also you can use it to cover the pop can. So if you're outside um, and you have a pop can um, it covers it protects it from like bugs and stuff from flying in and then um, we have our pampered chef jar opener um, that one is really popular for youth um, that need assistance with like gripping a jar don't some people that are are not able to um, grip the jar with their hands or if um, sometimes it just takes a little bit more um, arm strength and they don't have that strength then um, that device is helpful as well and then the pull zip device, um, toddlers, older adults, um, that device is helpful to be able to put, attach onto a zipper and then you can pull it. So if you're unable to grip the zip, um, that device is really helpful as well. And we have so many other things in our inventory for daily living. Um, and in our resource guide, we have a, a list of um, a lot of different adaptive clothing as well. We have just recently added some supportive seating devices. I'm really excited about these. <laughs> um, so some of our supportive seating that we have are the go-to vinyl firefly seat and the special tomato soft touch sitter. So both of these seats um, help with like posture support, um, daily living activities. So if a child wants to be um, more involved in play activities, if they need help um, sitting up at the table to eat, um, sitting up at a table to be able to be more um, included in different activities and that's at school at home um, we do have these seats and these seats are very expensive if you're not familiar um, they can range from 600 to almost 900 dollars um, for these type of seats so they're um, they're very popular a lot of, of different parenting groups that I'm in, they do ask for these seats if they if they're available to loan out. Um, insurance will cover these, but then that also sometimes just takes a it's a process trying to get the funding for those. Um, and so it's just one of those things that we're just excited to have available to support families um, when they're in need for these supportive seating um, AT devices. And we have they so what our program will do is we can loan those out um, until the insurance will provide that, or just even for you to come demonstrate that, see if it's a good fit for your kid, um, and then we can go from there. Do we have questions in the chat? I see like the, no? So some different assistive technology devices as well for daily living will include sleep devices. So we do have a Sony sleep bar. That is the flat, bar shaped, um, this is a speaker, but it's like a flat, almost like a flat rectangle pill shape. And it just goes under your pillow um, and it can um, connect to Bluetooth. So it can connect to any type of apps you have that can um, play music, audiobooks, podcasts, um, whatever is your kind of soothing space to get you to calm down, go to sleep. Um, but the benefits of using the Sony sleep bar is that it can fit under your pillow. And then also it's loud enough for the person that's laying on the pillow to hear it, but it won't disturb the person that may be in the room with you or just others around you. Um, so I really like the device. We kind of had some <laughs> going back and forth between um, our staff on like if it was loud enough or so there's other devices out there too that are like sleep um, speakers um, out there. So we can do some compare and contrast with things in our inventory as well. And then also just utilizing white noise machines, um, weighted blankets. There's, we have a couple of different weighted blankets in our inventory. Um, weighted blankets are great for that calming aspect um, to, you know, have that extra weight on your body for just that coziness. Um, they're known to like make help relax in like a sensory um, blanket. There's weighted stuffed animals. Um, and then there's also the creating routines using like wake up and night lights. These can be AT devices. We have a couple of them on the screen here that you can program through an app. 
Um, and then you can program for it to turn a different color when it's time to wake up. Um, and then also it turns a different color when, it time, when it's time to get ready for bed and turns a different color when it's time to like go to sleep. Um, those are known to help with routines um, when you're going for um, bedtime routines. And then also just nightlights, bringing that comfort. Um, there's a lot of creative ways to have nightlights to um, help bring that soothing um, comfort zone and, and also just making bedtime more fun. So nightlights that have stars that twinkle in their bedroom, um, nightlights that they can take, can have in the bed with them. Um, and then also just like using a nightlight in those routine systems as their alarm as well. So on the screen, there's also another light, night light that has like a smiley face on it. Um, so cute little things like that for kids. Um, and then one thing that um, is pretty new, there's a Fisher Price bedtime routine system. So on, this is a device that um, you can mount to the wall and it has various different tasks for um, a person to complete. So as they complete the different bedtime routines, they will push a button and this show it like it would ding and say, good job, you know, that you completed this task, change a different color, and then another task will um, go on the cloud shape. Um, so the, the images that are here are of a, um, a shirt. So letting you know, get your pajamas on. There's a toothbrush. There's um, a fork and a spoon to say, you know, time for dinner. Um, and then even morning routine. So there's a backpack. Um, there's a bathroom. There's a, I'm sorry, a toilet to remind you to go to the bathroom. And you also, so as a parent, you can, um, change the routines through the app. So there's, you can customize them. If there's a certain routine that you do in the morning. So if it's like, okay, you want to read, you want to read, do your affirmations or prayers in the morning, different things like that. Parents can change those um, different routines. And that just, those routine systems can really assist a child in going to bed or even those wake up routines, helping with um, anxiety, helping to stay focused and on task. Um, those are different devices just for sleep and waking up. And to add to sleeping and also for um, day-to-day day -day, um, or day and nighttime incontinence. So we get a lot of different um, parents, people in education, teachers that um, ask us for devices that are out there for um, bedwetting or even just having accidents at school. So there are so many different watches that um, there's potty watches that will say, um, I'm sorry, that will sing a song or a tune to remind you to go to the bathroom. There are watches that will just vibrate. Um, and so that are a little bit more discreet for when the child is at school. Um, there, so on the screen, we have a lot of different um, varieties of those watches. Um, there's a wobble watch. That one does a tune or, and it um, also will vibrate. You can set this. Um, and that's a little bit more heavy duty of a watch um, and it's a round shape. And then there's a, the e-Vibra brand watches. Those almost have the same um, form and shape of an Apple watch. A um, little bit more sleek in um, newer <laughs> type of design. And then there's also um, another um, e-Vibra watch that is almost like a Fitbit. So that skinnier band, then it's a little bit more discreet as well. Um, some of the potty watches are meant for toddlers. So they um, look just, they have a little bit more of a look, but like fun look, they're more bulkier. Um, they flash cute lights, but you know, if there's, there's an older child, they probably wouldn't want um, something that says potty watch on their wrist. So we like to have those um, different styles of watches available. Um, there's different clothing. So there's um, underwear, there's brief underwear, there's um, underwear for girls that um, will absorb um, better than um, at regular underwear. Um, so they have like an absorbable cloth um, for those accidents. And then there's also diaper um, pants available and they have those in different styles. So like short styles or actual pants. Um, there's a brand called Pajamas and those are absorbable pajamas. So those um, come in a wide variety of different styles and prints. Um, just kind of getting away from, you know, 
a child having to actually wear a diaper to bed. They have these different styles available, cute little prints where um, we're kind of getting rid of that shame of having accidents or having incontinence um, where, you know, we have these things available for if that does happen. And um, also where it doesn't have to be something that, you know, we could just be a little bit more discreet about that where a child doesn't have to be embarrassed um, about having incontinence. And then there's also bed alarms and sensors that are available. And those are something that will attach to a child's clothing at night. And then um, it can be attached to a bed pad or sometimes there's a little hook that um, will also attach like to their underwear and any sense of um, water, then uh, the alarm will go off. Um, there's a lot of those out there that um, there's pros and cons to all of the different sensors that are available. Um, and then also just making sure your bathroom access accessibility when you're dealing with um, a child that may have incontinence. So if the problem is they're not getting to the bathroom fast enough, maybe there's different ways that you can bring like a, a bedside commode or, you know, if, or if it's like a fear of, you know, they're scared to go to the bathroom. So we have night lights that leads a trail to the bathroom or there's a night light that's in the bathroom, just different things like that to make um, that transition to be able to be more independent using the bathroom easier. And so other daily living activities will be your health and safety on a day-to-day -day for youth. So we have a wide variety of different medicine reminders. Um, in on this screen, there is a medicine reminder um, that is a 30-month calendar reminder that you can put all of your medicine for the month. And um, that's a little bit on the pricier end. And then there's also your kind of um, basic medicine reminders that are just like throughout the week. And then they have like the inserts for daytime, nighttime. Um, there's sink, so more so home accessibility items. So like your sink extenders to bring out um, the sink in the faucet so that a toddler or someone shorter can reach the sink, um, different accessibility, things like that. And then also just those motion sensor lighting. So um, if you have a child that does tend to sleepwalk, um, you have those sensor lights available to just make sure that they don't fall when they're you know walking in the dark or, or whatever that is as far as just making sure your home is just more safe and accessible. Um, we have a lot of environmental adaptations as well in our inventory. Um, and another cute, um, cute and fun way, but still to be safe, there's a lot of different thermometers to make sure that the bath water is safe and not too hot, not too cold. Um, and then also there's a lot of different GPS tracking devices. Um, the one that we have on the screen is our Angel Sense device. And that device is a little bit more high tech than um, some of the other GPS tracking devices. Um, you, that one is a little bit more accurate on location. Um, you can do a lot of different settings. So if a child goes outside of a certain boundary, it will alert you. Um, and it has a lot of different um, accessible and adaptable clothing. So it can be worn in a lot of different ways rather than just a watch has to be on your wrist. Um, the Angel Sense has different um, ways that you can wear that device. And some assistive technology for memory. Um, we, there's a lot of different ways nowadays where you can do calendars, lists, reminders, routines. So you can do that on your smart device, um, on your iPhone or your Android, um, using Hey Google or Hey Siri, um, different ways to use your voice assistant. Um, and then there's also um, the Alexa device um, that can, you can add your calendars, lists and reminders and routines to that as well. Um, we have Apple Watches and Alexa Echo Show devices available um, where we will come out and demonstrate and show you different ways on how to add those reminders, set up your calendar, um, different ways that your um, Echo device can be used for um, whatever you need. So memory, um, mental health, and then, um, Another device that we recently were like, oh, this is great for memory um, is our pen friend. It's a label recorder. So you will um, take the pen friend and you'll push the record button. Um, and it's just like a shape um, 
it's like it looks like a pen <laughs> really and um you will push it onto these uh circle labels or square um and you will record what you want it to say and then after you record um whatever you want the label to say you will then just touch the label and then it will just read back um, whatever that is. So that's great for memory to kind of remember instructions, remember where things are, um, put those calendar um, things on your refrigerator, they come in magnet labels. Um, so those are just different devices for memory. And then we also have um, assistive technology for mental health. So um, we have a lot of different apps available. Um, that kit that we can demonstrate and show how to use. And those apps just go through mindfulness, guided um, meditation, breathing, focus. We have some apps that can assist with PTSD and coping skills. Um, on the screen is the Calm app. And it has a question. It says, good morning, how are you feeling? As a check-in, and then you can say that you're happy, excited, grateful, unsure, angry, stressed. And then from there, it will guide you through um, different ways to cope. Some new devices that we are um, <laughs> still trying to learn and trying to figure out where well, how we can fit these into our inventory and then just still trying to like test these out and they get really expensive, but there are wearable devices um, and they can help with stress regulation and panic, um, focus, attention and staying on task. And then there's also self-regulation and coping skills. So some of these devices can assist with um, calming down. So that's what this Mightier game, it's a um, game in an app and it, it has a heart monitor that hooks on to a child's um, arm and as they're playing the game it gets harder and then they have to use coping skills to calm down so if their heart rate um, is going up the game will continue to go to get harder and then they have to squeeze the stress ball or take deep breaths um, sometimes they'll tell them to jump up and down like give them different ways to bring that heart rate down and to kind of calm down um, before the game will get either back to normal or easier for them. So that's a cool game. It has a lot of different activities. It has individual activities, family activities. Um, they have card game activities um, as well, but all of them are geared towards mental health and that stress regulation. Um, there's a device called Touch Points, and that is the um, kind of like a watch that has like the pink strap. It's a square, and it goes on your wrist or can go on your ankle. Um, and that also can determine when your heart rate is going up and it also just gives you um it vibrates if it's if it notices that you're going off task um so those also help with focus attention and staying on task and then there's different vibrating watches and um the that will remind you to do tasks so the watch on here is it says write down your homework on the watch so different things like that that can help you um and give you reminders um and then the image of the um, little boy on the screen. He's kind of using something that looks like an inhaler. It's called a Calm Ego. Um, so that is an, is, it's not an inhaler. Um, it's not a medical prescription, but it does help with um, breathing in and out into that device. So it does assist with um, panic and that stress regulation. And we have a lot of different devices available for um, sensory and also the self-regulation. So on the screen are images of our companion pets, which are robotic pets um, that purr, they bark, they roll over. So they're interactive um, pets. And then we have fidgets, um, so different fidget blocks available and um, tactile and sensory mats. So even for infants or toddlers um, on the ground, just different tactile that can bring um, some of that sensory and self-regulation. And we have sensory um, body socks. Um, so that flex and that retention um, with the spandex that also helps with calming and um, sensory processing. And then we have a lot of different headphones available for um, sensory. And just if someone needs um, to figure out like someone likes to listen to music or they like to listen to podcasts, but they really don't like to wear the over the head headphones. So we have a lot of different headphone styles available um, for kids. 
some AT to just go over in the classroom. There's a wide range of different AT devices. Um, and we do, we are currently in talks with Alt-Shift to kind of collaborate and figure out, you know, what things they provide and what things um, we can assist with that may be um, helpful and resourceful for classrooms and um, schools. But there are common corners out there um, that teachers are really starting to incorporate into their classroom. So just a space or area for kids to come to, um, there's fidgets available, there's, um, Sometimes people will put different um, exercises on the walls to remind people, to remind the student to calm down or to remind of coping skills and ways to calm down. Um, there's always like a comfortable chair in that area. Um, and then just different fidgets. So sensory bins that can be on the tables for, so that might include slime, putty, um, different fidget toys, um, different things like that. And then there's also the weighted lap pads. And those are known to, again, um, give that extra weight and compression to bring down um, the nervous system and assist with like coping and, and also um, attention. Um, and then we have a, a wide variety of different writing aids um, to assist with learning and development. And um, there's tablets and iPads out there and available for that accessibility as well. And then there's also a lot of learning and thinking apps that we can show and demonstrate. We have some sensory seating available. Um, so wobble chairs and stools, um, those are different um, devices that help with like getting the wiggles out for certain kids and um there's different uh devices that can i'm sorry there's different wobble um uh, wiggle wobble chair feet <laughs> that can go onto a chair and that also assists with if you're um, wiggling and um rocking back and forth um that just it makes it a little bit more safer for a child in a chair where that the feet actually wobble for them um there's bouncy bands so if a child taps um a lot there's a band that can assist with them being able to get that like tapping out um and then there's different discs in those wobble stools again to help with the wiggles and wobbles um the tactile seat cushion um, is a cushion that just sits under a child, but it has like the raised bumps um, and that's available as well for sensory seating. Um, some assistive technology for reading that we have available, our um, LeapFrog Reader. Um, that's more for um, younger children, but it's a pen that you put onto the different texts and it will read out loud. Um, there's also the C pens that pretty much do the same thing and that can also hook up to um, headphones. Like the image on the screen is someone, an older um, student that is using a um, C pen to read that text out loud. So it scans the text on the page and then it reads it out loud and she has her headphones hooked in. Um, there are, uh, we have, we also have the OrCam Read. This is a, one of our really high price items but we do have this available. The benefit of the OrCam Read that's different from the C-Pen is that the OrCam Read will um, read the full page text just it wants you hit one button and it will read everything on the text with the C-Pen. You have to kind of guide it along um, the text and it'll read out loud what you're guiding it on. Um, and then there's also other visual aids um, to help with reading. And then um, using picture visual books, recipe for uh, books and recipes and instructions are also helpful for people that have any trouble reading in audiobooks. And so we also have note taking AT. So um, smart pens, the LiveScribe Echo Pen and the LiveScribe Symphony Pen. These pens um, will record uh, what you're hearing. They will record what you're writing when you're taking notes. And then um, you have the um, ability to, once you're writing something on a page, you will then be able to put um, what you're writing onto the screen to have it as a digital copy as well. Um, so these are um, really cool. Um, again, kind of pricey. You have to purchase ink as well for these um, pens if you want to continue to use them. Um, but we do have these available for people to try out. And so for it, to go on to note taking, I'm going to pass it on to Abby, who will talk about some writing and drawing, AT. 
might help if I unmute. Um, <laughs> thank you, Ishani. So there are a lot of different types of pencil or pen grips. Um, they're made of different materials, like some are silicone or foam, um, and they can be used if you're right-handed, left-handed, or ambidextrous. Um, on screen, we have one that is a silicone one. Um, we also have, uh, it looks like a large foam egg. Um, we also have some that you actually insert your fingers into um, and a larger foam version that covers almost the whole pencil. Um, and we have a writing bird, which is at the top there. It's like a little glass thing that you can screw in a pencil or pen and you kind of just use that like you would a computer mouse. Um, and then next to that, we have the Arthrider, which is, it looks like a ball that you can put your whole hand around for a different type of grip. Um, and side note, you can make one of these with a tennis ball if you just cut an X in the top and bottom, stick a pen through there um, or pencil. Uh, and then on the top right there, we have a blue pen again. Um, that's something that you can just uh, kind of put your finger through and kind of pinch. And that one I feel like has been pretty popular and it's been really helpful for a lot of people. And then there's also different types of crayons that you can have. What's shown on the screen is one of the Crayola egg crayons um, that provides different, um, just different grips. There's some that are like shaped like peanuts and different ones that are like ergonomic shaped ones that are just um, easier to hold. And I see that Sarah said, are you able to touch on writing aids for youth with finger amputations? Um, yeah, well, Ajani, do you have any input on youth? I don't. Um, I know me and you were talking about some of the mouth aids. Um, and so we were, we, that was something that we had a conversation when we were creating the slide. Um, and that's something that we we're looking into. Oh, yeah. And that um, the like handy, the thing that we were talking about that's like you can rest your hand on it. And like as long as you can like guide your arm, mm -hmm. um, it'll hold the pencil for you or it'll let you can velcro your hand to it or. And then you can just like as long as you can move your arm around like it's it goes in any direction it's really cool um I will add that to our. Um, resource guide because the name of it's slipping my mind and Sarah i'm going to make sure I put or I can email you directly too. um i'm going to make a note of that. yeah of course. Um, yes, Christina so much at. <laughs> yes. I know <laughs> there's a lot um and then you can go to the next slide Asian a. Um, all right, and then some AT for crafting. Um, at the top there, we have a blue electric scissors, which are really cool. I mean, they're kind of loud, but they um, you can either press the button and hold it, or you can lock it in place. And all you have, you can even like rest on the table and just guide it. And it cuts through a lot of different things. Like you can cut through cotton fabrics, leather even, cardboard, even like thinner tin aluminum sheets. Um, and it usually comes with like two rechargeable batteries and they last for quite a while. Um, those have been pretty popular. And then next to that um, is a Mickey Mouse uh, coloring book. Uh, it's a braille coloring book, so it's tactile and you can feel the outline. And next to that, we have an adjustable art easel that can go on a table and at the bottom left is a really fun, um, it's the Zox art roller. And so that has like a wheelchair bridge attachment uh, that the art roller can be attached to. And it can also go on walkers as well. And then it can even be interchanged with um, a push handle. So if you were walking, you could use it as well. And we used it for like making a mural on the ground. Um, and at our Her Power, Her Pride camp, which is super awesome. Check it out. Um, and then we also have these dot paint markers. Um, they're just easier to grip. Um, there's no need for brushes or cups, so it's a little less messy as well. And But if you want to get messy, that we got paint brushes. And we have those in a lot of different uh, types of handles, like larger handles that are easier to grip. And um, these no spill paint cups, we have some of those as well. And then the Cricut, I'm going to pass that off to Asian because she is the Cricut queen. <laughs> oh 
Yeah, so the Cricut Maker, I love this device. It is a cutting machine. Um, they can range from about $100 to about three to $400. So it is an investment to buy a Cricut machine, but it can do so much. Um, you do need like some software to um, be able to navigate the Cricut machine, but it can cut um, pretty much any shape. It can draw, it can... Um, stamp it can cut a lot of different materials so um, wood acrylic cardstock paper poster board um felt a lot of different things but it's a cool machine um adhesive papers people have made stickers with this um so it's it's a really cool machine that can be used for at um so if anyone isn't able to hold scissors or cut those fine details um they can use a Cricut Maker and we do have these available to try out. I can show you and demonstrate um, using these and then you can loan it. Next. You can go to the next slide. Okay. <laughs> and then we have some AT for fiber arts like crocheting and knitting, embroidery. Um, we have an ergonomic candle one, it's pink and green and there's different attachments on theirs and they go from they fit all hook sizes from like B to K, I believe that's what it was. And we also have a crochet hook that is interchangeable as well, but it also, you can keep track of your stitches and your rows, so it helps with memory. You just click a button for stitches, click a button for rows. And then underneath that, there's another way to count stitches. And it's like a little adjustable ring you can put on, and it's just like a clicker that you can just tally up um, what stitch you're on. And we have rings too that are, stitch counters. Um, and then on the far left here, we have the Centro knitting machine. It's a 48 needle one and it can create flat panels or in the round stitches. And it has, so you, really you just have to, the hardest part I think is like putting, like weaving the, to get it started. And then, but after that, it's just a hand crank. Um, and then the embroidery hoop, um, it's height adjustable. Um, it has like a 360 swivel. And you can either use it on a table and it's pretty sturdy, or you can, because it's like a paddle bottom, you can even put that under your leg on in your wheelchair and you can adjust the height and you can do it from your chair. And it helps with neck and back pain because you're not staring down uh, cross stitching. You can go to the next page. So this one is AT for play. Um, there, we have a couple different switch activated toys. Like the elephant here, um, if you were to press one foot, it's like plays hide and seek. The other one, it uh, sings a song. And so instead of having to try and find that and push those buttons, you can just use a switch that's a lot um, more accessible. And same thing with the dinosaur on the bottom. Um, you would press the button and it would make dinosaur noises and spit out bubbles. And it's really cute. Um, and then we have the alternate spinner, which is the top right, and you can either press that red button on the bottom, or you can have it attached to a switch as well. So you can be like up to 30 feet away. I mean, I don't know how you would read it from that far away, but you could. Um, and then we also have this really cool bumper car thing, and Asian is also going to go over that for me. <laughs> yeah, so we have electric um, bumper cars available. Um, the reason why we like this specific device is that instead of it having a steering wheel, um, it has the joystick handles. And also there is a remote um, that is available for um, a sibling, a parent, um, someone to also move around. And it spins in circles and also goes back and forth. Um, and then it has the barrier around it so it's a little bit more safe to make to to use indoors um so they could um if someone has a power chair um they could use this also to navigate around the house to kind of get out of their chair um and just kind of a little bit more fun that it spins around and it can bump different objects and not um do a lot of damage All right, and then we have some AT for gaming, specifically like tabletop card games, um, board games. And on the screen, we have a pair of, they're larger than regular dice. They're black with raised white bumps, so you can feel they're tactile, so you can feel what number you've rolled. Um, we also have different types of card holders. So instead of holding the cards in your hand, you can stick them in the slot and they just hold up for you. And we also have low vision um, cards. So it's just larger print. 
And an image on the screen is of two kids at our AT for gaming night. They're demonstrating various types of accessible adaptive gaming items, like the alternate spinner and the dice. You can go to can the next one. Dice tower. Oh, I did not. I skipped right over it. <laughs> and then the top right is two individuals uh, looking very happy. And they're using the dice tower at one of our booths, um, which is you just you can grab the dice and you just drop it in the top. And it's just a fun way. And then it's collected at the bottom. So dice aren't rolling off the table. You don't have to go running after your dice. It stays in one contained spot. And if the rolling the dice um, is an issue, um, if Using a cup is easier, but you still want it to be kind of fun. You can just use a cup and dump it in there. All right, and then AT for video games. Um, we have a lot of different types of um, adaptive controllers. Mainly the one everyone has heard about is the Xbox adaptive controller, which is super cool. Um, the bottom picture, you can see all these little black dots on the back of it. Those are each different inputs for buttons that are on your controller. And there could be a switch attached to every single one of those. It's very customizable. And there's switches, there's joysticks, foot pedals, um, a lot of things that you can use with this. And you can use it on PC, you can use it on Xbox, PlayStation. You can even use it on the Switch if, uh, if you have an adapter. Um, and some of the switches that we have are most from AbleNet. They have a lot of interesting switches. There's buttons, micro light switches. So like the tiniest touch um, will activate it. There's also different types of switches out there like bite switches, grasp switches, a string switch that you just pull. Um, and with the buttons, you can attach those to headrests. So you can use your head to press the buttons. You could use your elbow, your chin, feet, anything that works best for you. And then the pair of feet on there are resting on this circular board that can be used as a controller. Um, so it can work with the Xbox controller um, and with your PC for some games. And it can even be used for like a mouse or joystick. And then we also have a PS4 controller with purple grips on both the joystick and the handle. And those, um, they give you different um, types of grips and height options. Um, it helps reduce slip. And it's a sensory thing too. There's different types that are convex or concave and there's different textures. Um, and the grips actually are supposed to help uh, with if your hands get super sweaty when playing. And there's also the Amazon Echo Dot. Um, you can actually do a lot of voice activated games with that. There's things like escape rooms, 20 questions, Jeopardy. Um, there's a Batman Wayne investigations game, song quizzes. There's so many things you can do with the Echo. And then it's next slide, Jalisa. Hi there. Um, so this is Jalisa. So I do AT for outdoor recreation. Um, we have everything from like e-bikes, uh, fishing, camping, hiking, hunting, gardening, rock hunting, bird watching, and so much more. Um, so the image is on the slide. The first one is of a 11 year old boy who is on a trike, which this is our kids Liberty trike. It only goes 12 miles an hour. Um, and it does, we do have e-bikes that can go up to 28 miles an hour, um, which is scary, <laughs> but um, the trike does go uh, slower than pretty much all the other e-bikes that we do have. Um, we even have adapters. So the throttle is on the right-hand side, um, but we do have an adapter to plug in to make it left-handed. Um, and so that's really helpful. And then also the spike, instead of just using the hand, uh, hand braking system, you can also pedal backwards like a lot of kids' bikes are. Um, so you pedal backwards and the bike will stop for the braking. Um, and the next image is of at her at her power. Uh, the camp that Abby had said um, is a fish grabber. So if someone has a difficult time grabbing the fish off of the fishing hook, um, this will kind of you pull back with your fingers, and it opens the hooks at the bottom of it, and you let go of your fingers, and it will kind of do like a grip onto the fish, and you're on you're able to take out the hook out of the fish's mouth. 
And on this image is an individual holding a bass with our fish grabber. And Teresa just put in the chat about her power as well. <laughs> um, and then on this next slide, we have gardening AT. So this is a fire person uh, style watering system. So instead of pulling the trigger on a um, watering hose, you can pull back like a fire person's uh, watering hose. Um, we also have ergonomic hand tools um, with arm cuffs on them. Uh, we have different types of seating for gardening. This one specifically is a bench, but also a kneeler. Uh, different uh, tools to help with planting seeds in the garden. Um, this kind of looks like a magnifying glass. You put the seeds in the circular part and then individually uh, the seeds will come out on a little opening and go down the handle part of it and go into the hole for planting. Um, and then the last image on the slide is at Earth Day event that we did. And it's uh, kids planting different seeds using our ergonomic hand tools as well as our seeding square, which is kind of small in there to see, um, but it's a seeding square and it basically uh, helps you do placement of different seeds um, based on like what the seeds need to be planted depth wise, space wise and such. We can do next slide. And then we have AT for camping. Um, so we have different types of marshmallow roasting sticks or hot dog roasting sticks. Uh, the first image is of a set of 12 roasting sticks that kind of have finger placements on them. They're telescoping, um, so the individual doesn't have to get too close to the fire. And then above that, we have it's the roasting reel. And so what this does, it's a marshmallow roasting stick that telescopes. Um, and to rotate it, you just kind of reel the handle on it like you would a fishing rod and it rotates the marshmallow for you. Um, we also have a headlamp, which is super helpful um, for anyone. This just goes on to your head. They do make kid style ones. So like cool little dinosaurs and such. Um, this is a push button. Some have slide buttons um, and this has an adjustable strap on it. And they come in a variety of different colors. We specifically just have the teal one in our inventory. And then we have the hammock swinging chair. Um, an image on the slide is my daughter sitting in front of our fireplace um, at a distance and it, she's her toes are towards the fireplace because she was cold and so she's kind of like a little hammock. Um, and then we also have an individual who's in the hammock chair facing forward. Um, the kids can swing and play in this and it doesn't go too far out like you could set it a pretty decent amount away from a wall and they're not going to swing and hit the wall um same with the fireplace there was no way that she was going to be able to hit the fireplace and it just kind of lets them get their wiggles out and swing in the camping chairs rather than rocking in camping chairs which can be dangerous <laughs> and then we have at for outdoor recreation play um, so there we have recreation, sports, and outdoor play, um, chalky stick, which is uh, on two of these images, there's a little boy and a little girl. Um, these are long handled devices where you slide the chalk in and you're able to write on the ground or draw pictures or whatever it may be. Um, we have a chalk drawer that attaches to a wheelchair and I believe a walker. Correct me if I'm wrong, Asian A. Yes. Yeah. So the so these attach to wheelchairs and walkers. Um, you can put different colors of chalk in there, and then they wheel around or walk around, and this will draw pictures on the ground. Um, and then we have a snow slinger. Um, again, a picture of my daughter forming a snowball. Um, so what this basically does is you pick up the snow and close the um. I guess trap doors shut <laughs> and it creates a snowball and then you can take it and you can use the long handle to sling the snowball and then we also have uh as abby mentioned along with like the switch activated bubble makers we also have just uh bubble makers that are standard push button next slide 
Also, Jalisa, um, Sarah wrote, we okay. love these. They're very sturdy and lightweight when you're talking about the hammock chair. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, they are very sturdy and pretty lightweight. Um, they fold, like they fold into like your uh, standard camping chairs. Um, they come with a really awesome case. I wish I had it with me, but it comes with like an awesome case that's almost like folds out to a blanket and then uh, straps like velcro or uh, connector straps. I forgot what they're called. Um, no, yeah. 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 They just come with like little <laughs> buckle things that uh, buckle short ways and long ways. And it's easy, compact, can throw it in the back of the car and take it camping. And it, the type of material, yeah, it's great for indoor and outdoor. Yes. Um, so that is all of the AT devices that we're going to show today. But like we stated before, there's so many different devices um, out there for youth. Um, again, we like to, um, we provide, sorry, um, devices for infants to older adults. Um, and then also just to kind of piggyback off of the fact that this was an overview, but um, Abby has um, different Tech Tuesdays that were specifically for AT for gaming, specifically for AT for crafting and art. Um, and Jalisa has also done multiple Tech Tuesdays that were geared towards um, outdoor rec. So um, winter prep, fall cleanup, and a gardening Tech Tuesday. So we have a lot of those um, that are available and you will have access to them. We'll be sending out the links um, to our drive. Anyone that's on our listserv um, has access to that. We are going to be attending a couple of upcoming events. So this Thursday um, for Adaptive Recreation Expo, um, Jalisa, Abby, and Teresa will be going to that event. Oh, I'm sorry, we have a hand raise. Kelly? Oh, Kelly, you're muted and your hand is raised. Okay. <laughs> I know sometimes um, when you hold your hand up, Zoom will just automatically raise your hand. Oh, so okay. That's what happened? <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's this Thursday um, in Grand Rapids. And then um, February 17th through the 18th, we will be up in Higgins Lake uh, for their Winter Fest. We'll have a booth there. And then we also have some upcoming Tech Tuesdays. Um, we have AT for Trauma coming up February 28th. And then we also have AT for Pet Care um, in March. Nick, do you have those links to those registrations? If not, we'll we um we can put those in the resource guide as well so that people can register yeah i can paste them in the chat and then i also just pasted in the chat the link to our survey um yes. that you can take that helps us just gather more information and make sure we're doing things well and what we can do better and so forth so feel free to fill it out once you're done here um we appreciate it um, and if you are interested in learning more about our organization, um, receiving training or us coming out and doing like a presentation for you and your staff, or if you have groups um, of students or youth groups that you would like us to come out and show some AT to or do a couple of demonstrations on items, feel free to contact us and reach out. Um, we have our emails in the resource guide, our phone numbers, um, and also just the different ways to reach us through um, our demo request forms and links. Um, and then we also have a link to our lending library available. Um, so if there's anything that you saw today that you would like to request, um, feel free to reach out and say like, hey, I really like that item. Can you bring it out? And we will schedule it in. Does anyone have any other questions? Oh. Uh, Kelly wrote that our trainings, she couldn't unmute, that's what happened. Oh. Our trainings are available on our website on the training tab as well. And also, I know we went over so many things and even just talking about what you can do after, like, if you're like, oh, I think they went over this. You can just message us and be like, I think there was this one thing that you talked about and we can figure it out. <laughs> and our next Tech Tuesday, we'll have um, CRC CEUs available. The AT for Trauma presentation. So if you know anyone that needs their CRC CEUs, tell them to join us. And thanks everyone for coming out today. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you, you so much. You're welcome. Thanks, Tanisha. Oh, no, thank you, Tanisha. <laughs>
Nick, you probably can stop recording.